Yeah, about that. So I've been making content for almost four years now, and in that time, I put therapists in Bentleys and more people on couches in the housing crisis of 08. Probably an exaggeration, but you get the point. I've ruined more animals for people than the fans of Zootopia. So because of that, and because this video is two years old now, I thought it'd be fun to remake it. So, same rules apply. I challenge you to watch this video with a straight face. If you smile, you lose, and because I'm that confident, comment where in the video you folded. Because I got an ace in the hole, and I don't mean Austin. There is one surefire way to make the terminally online smile. Yeah, just in position. Look, look, look. Oh my god! <laughs> Yeah, that'd do it. Now for a while, I wasn't a believer. I thought cats pretending to be scared by their cubs was one of those feel-good facts we made up. Like the idea that the four-letter C word that elephants think of when they see us is cute. The problem with that theory is we've seen lions, tigers, leopards, and snow leopards all do this, so there's only two options. Either the most overqualified killing machines on earth also have the awareness of a kumquat, or cat moms actually play scared to boost their child's confidence, likely to encourage the type to stalk, hunt, and all the things he'll need to get his own groceries one day. But the underrated part is they don't just act, they overreact the way any parent supporting their child would. I've seen leopards get DoorDash delivered to the dome and not jump as high. The things mothers do for love. But what about fathers? There is no child support in the wild, and nothing stopping most males from going out for milk indefinitely, but there are some exceptions, like Murphy. Murphy is a 31-year-old bald eagle living in the World Bird Sanctuary in Missouri, where the symbol of America is expected to spend the rest of his life after an injury left him unable to fly. He'd also probably never have a mate since he was never able to bond with any of the females. For a minute, it seemed Murphy's law had our boy in a chokehold, but one day last spring, keepers noticed Murphy acting weird, or at least weird for a grounded avian incel. They took a closer look and realized Murphy had built a nest, but instead of an egg, he had a rock that he made his full-time job protecting from not just people, but the other eagles too. Scientists believe that spring hormonal changes had triggered a paternal response in Murphy. In other words, that baby fever had him acted different. But the story didn't end there. A couple weeks later, several miles away, an eagle nest had fallen during a bad storm. And one thing about eagle nests, they're much, much bigger than you think. The fall killed one of the eagle chicks and left the other one an orphan. And that's how Murphy got promoted from a rock to a real life baby. Keepers introduced him with a little eaglet in a safety cage in case Murphy switched up and chose violence. He chose quite the opposite. He showed genuine curiosity in the orphan and eventually started feeding it completely on his own. And just like that, first time father Murphy took the chick under his semi crippled wing and the two bonded. Bro manifested fatherhood. And only a couple months later, Eaglet 23-126 was released back into the wild after being successfully raised by Murphy. And while it's technically bad luck to name a bird meant to be released, Murphy's son still managed to leave with a nickname, Rocky. Speaking of the rock that started it all, Murphy's rock child would be auctioned off with the proceeds going to the sanctuary's food bill. As for Murphy, I'm sure he's enjoying the empty nest. At least until next spring where he'll probably do it all over again. And speaking of bodyguards for birds, next, we gotta talk about the Maremma. This cotton-colored canine was bred in the mountains of Italy by farmers to protect their livestock from anything from packs of wolves or bears to even white-tailed sea eagles. But they don't just look like sheep. Maremma puppies are often raised alongside sheep with very little human contact, leading to an overprotective Q-tip that views the entire flock as its family. Don't get me wrong, Maremmas have the personality of a cinnamon roll most of the time, until you give dog Toretto a reason, so in this case, if you flock around, you will find out. And that doesn't just go for sheep. On the complete opposite side of the world, on Middle Island off the coast of Australia, the world's smallest penguin was flirting with extinction. The little blue penguin nearly got wiped out of existence by foxes. So bad that the population that was once at 20,000 got cut down to 27. That's when a farmer had an idea. Swampy Marsh already had Maremma dogs guarding his free-range chickens, and you know what they say, penguins are just business chickens in suits. So he had two of his dogs, Yudi and Tula, raised around penguins. Had they get their name? That. That's how. And just like that, the two dogs would see all penguins as their own, and as you can guess, they defended them like it. The Maremmas didn't even have to put foxes on shirts, just having their scent around was enough to make a fox readjust its grocery list. And it wasn't long until the pint-sized penguin population made a comeback. The two dogs that pioneered this have since retired, but to this day, you'll still see Maremmas running protection for the little blue penguins of Middle Island. You really don't deserve dogs. Even in one of the darkest days in American history, you'll find at least one dog trying to make it better. You don't need a history lesson to grasp just how horrific the 9-11 attacks were. It was rough on everybody, including the rescue dogs. But you ever wonder what happened to the four-legged heroes of Ground Zero? Well, this is Brittany. She's a golden retriever with a name that would give autocorrect an aneurysm. She was also the last surviving rescue dog from 9-11. 
Ground Zero was actually her first ever job with owner and trainer Denise Carlos, where they spent 10 days at the disaster site. Brittany would also go on to help with searches after Hurricane Katrina and her equally evil twin sister Rita. Brittany would retire at the old age of 9, but wouldn't retire from making a difference, just this time in schools. She would go on to work in elementary schools as a reading dog. She was basically emotional support for first graders or special needs children struggling with reading, and with Brittany on the clock, those same children actually performed better. But like honestly most good things in the world, Brittany was unfortunately taken from us in 2016. But not before getting a hero send off from firefighters and rescue workers on her way to the animal hospital where she was retired from life. Brittany retired from helping people, but the next animal needed people to help her retire. So this bear went viral cause let's be honest, if you've worked more than a minute or gone to college at some point, you've been this bear. But her backstory was less relatable and a whole lot less wholesome. This is Chada, and for the first 14 years of her life, she was part of the Ukrainian circus, where she was exploited, tortured, and treated as a prop. Things didn't get much better when she was bought out of the circus because her new home would be a small rusted cage above a garage that would be cruel for a bulldog, let alone a whole bear. The abuse left her virtually blind and even cost her most of her teeth. Worst of all, Chada is a Himalayan brown bear, an endangered species with only hundreds left in circulation. So long story short, it was all bad for Chada. At least until 2019, when the beaten down bear was rescued and taken to the White Rock Sanctuary in Ukraine. So if she looks like the wrong side of the weekend, it's cause she just woke up from a 20 year nightmare. That might actually be the first time she's ever touched grass in her 25 laps around the sun. But what does a bear that spent 5 presidential terms in a box even do for fun? Well if you ever see her, she's probably playing in her pool, or making friends with a stick, as one does. Or she's channeling her inner old head and yelling at the bears and wolves for making too much noise. And even though she's 25 and allegedly too old for DiCaprio, Chada's even been seen spitting game, kissing one of the other males in the sanctuary through a fence. A whole girl still got it, and I'd 100% commit a census subtraction for Chada. But I would commit crimes against humanity and an affront to the lord for our next animal. Question, totally unrelated by the way, but you ever wonder what animal was the first time we've ever seen a dwarf in nature? Well, you're looking at him. This isn't editing, this isn't photoshop, this is an elephant just over 5 feet tall. I don't think y'all are really hearing me. I can look this elephant in the eye! Got a little out of character there, but yeah, not only did biologists in Sri Lanka find this DeVito built elephant, they really found man's trying to square up with another male. Not to mention the steed of Tyrion Lannister was actually the aggressor. Little guy wanted every ounce of the smoke. Turns out being built like an aggressive footstool makes it really awkward to fight you. And I like to think all the elephants treated him no differently cause even elephants understand, sometimes shit happens. My only question is, with dating right, y you think you can reach? I, I feel like it would take creativity to Kama Sutra and a Pilates class for a female to make it work. I don't know where he is or what he's doing but if I ever see bro in a Kevin Hart movie then I can sleep well knowing he's found his purpose. But if there's one animal that needs a movie, it's one that got violated in one of the biggest box office come ups of all time. I love Lion King and Simba's revenge arc altered my brain chemistry for the better, but they'll forever catch smoke for having all the homies hating hyenas. In real life, lions steal from the laugh track of the savannah more than vice versa. And sometimes lions take more than just lunch. Generational beef is so on site that lions will go out of their way to blow a hyena's back out and retire both of their back legs. They don't even kill them, they just nerf their quality of life and let time do the rest. And that's exactly what happened here, where this hyena was filmed after a lion left them operating on less than 50%. But apparently last Sunday wasn't the first time a lion couldn't kill a 49er because that same hyena was found almost a year later, still paralyzed but still very much alive. Now I couldn't really find a lot of info on him so that's all we really know. Or at least it would be, if I didn't reach out to the guy that took the video. This is Kathan Moore, he's a wildlife photographer who was kind enough to give me the full story, or at least from what he saw. So here's the full timeline of the hyena that ghosted death, straight from the source. He first saw the handicapped hyena January 8th, 2022 in Kruger National Park in South Africa. He was impressed, but also bittersweet since there was no way he would survive the African bush with a broken back. Except Moore would see the same hyena again in April, same disability, but otherwise still healthy. But the real plot twist wasn't until he saw him around other hyenas. Kathan watched as the two wheel drive ran over to a kill and started shoving hyenas out of the way, even snapping at one from behind. The disabled hyena was still bullying other hyenas in the clan and earning his pound of flesh and Kathan even believes that he was one of the higher ranking members. Kathan would see this middle finger to the grim reaper throughout the months before finding him for the last time on the last day of 2022. Almost a full calendar year after seeing him for the first time. According to Moore, he sat with the hyena all day, almost, almost as if he knew. 
Now, Kathan hasn't seen him since, and while there is a good chance his time finally ran out, Moore also believes that he could have just moved on to another area with his clan. But even the worst case scenario means that this dude survived at least a year after getting spine split by a lion. That's a W in and of itself, unless you're a Lions fan. Now, we've talked about some of the weirdest animal team-ups in nature. There's warthogs using mongoose as a spa, a guinea pig doing the same thing except with vultures, and of course, the fact that ravens are a step away from fully weaponizing wolves. But there's another animal duo that nobody saw coming, and this one also involves wolves. This is an Ethiopian wolf, and out of the almost 40 species of canines, they're the closest to getting completely discontinued. But they found an unlikely ally. This is a gelata. It's really the hippo of monkeys, because even though their dental screams carnivore, gelatas have the diet of a lawnmower. Somehow the wolves figured out that their chances of a successful hunt are higher when they do it around the monkeys. In fact, their success rate went from an anemic 25% when alone, all the way to 67 when surrounded by gelata gang. And somehow the same monkeys that run from the mountains when they see a feral or domestic dog are the very definition of unbothered around the wolves. The wolves even go out of their way to make themselves look like less of a threat, switching out their normal zigzag hunting run for a slower, less intimidating stalk. It's believed the grass fueled gelatas disturb rodents and stuff and make it easier for them to get picked off by the wolves. And even though the monkeys are about prey size, in about eight years of research, there was only one time where a wolf tried to murk a baby monkey. The wolf got dealt with violently and like a predator on a registry was never allowed near the herd again. So it might not be the Disney movie Wolves and Ravens are, but Gelatas and Wolves might just be the most underrated duos in nature. But you won't find a better story than the tale of the BLT. The story of a lion, tiger, and bear cub all rescued from a basement in Atlanta and brought to the Noah's Ark Sanctuary. The three had bonded and were inseparable, so they were nicknamed BLT. B for Baloo the bear, L for Leo the lion, and T for the tiger named Shere Khan. Baloo was like the chill older brother and the glue of the group. Leo was the quiet, stoic one, and Shere Khan was easily the troublemaker, but by far the most affectionate. The three were basically conjoined triplets for 15 years until Leo would pass away in 2016 to inoperable liver tumors and Shere Khan expired in 2018. I'll drop a link to a video with the full story, but a lot of people wanted to know how Baloo was doing. So I asked them, and here's what they said. The last member of BLT is doing well and actually celebrated his 22nd birthday last July. He hasn't been introduced to other animals since Shere Khan and Leo, but considering black bears are solitary, he's probably happier that way. And best believe the star of Noah's Ark gets spoiled with fruitcakes, ice treats, and even bubble baths. They even went and renovated his old clubhouse because Baloo only deserves the best. And when he's not in there, he's enjoying life in his own private personal pool. Low key, bro living better than me. So how's Baloo doing? He's doing how he deserves. Also, his favorite treats are Tootsie Pops and Oreos. That has nothing to do with anything, I just thought it was cool. Speaking of Oreos, what do a parrot, a raven, a seal, and a beluga all have in common? They've all shown the ability to mimic human speech, from conversing corvids to catcalling seals. But there's another animal not enough people know about, and that would be Wilkie a 14-year-old orca in Antibes, France, and the first one to ever mimic human speech. And before you say it, no, not like this. I think. I hope. You see, orcas aren't just intelligent. They have cultures and different trends that they follow, just like us. They also have different dialects, with each family group having different tones and frequencies. It's like how I can say, Aaron earned an iron urn, but if you in Baltimore, you finna hear, Iron urn and iron urn. Wilkie was trained to mimic her caretaker, saying things like, Hello. Hello. Bye bye. And even count to three. One, two, three. Hey, before you judge them, just remember they're doing that from a nostril on their head. It's all fun and games until you're on a boat and a desaturated serial killer tells you bye bye. But like with other talking animals, orcas are just mimicking the sounds they hear around them. Mimicry is a vital skill for a lot of animals, but it's also led to one of the most iconic animal pictures of all time. You've definitely seen this viral picture, but you probably don't know the tragic chain of events that led to it. The man taking the selfie is Machu Shamavu, and the two girls behind him are Takazi on the left and Ndezi. It was taken in Virunga National Park, home to up to a thousand endangered mountain gorillas. Here, the biggest threat to a 400 pound pacifist is poachers, either trafficking babies as pets or straight up slaughtering adults to sell as trophies. And that's what happened in 2007, with a mother gorilla taking a bullet to the back of the head, execution style. She was long gone by the time rangers got to her, but they found two-month-old Takazi still clinging to her life-deprived mother. 
She was taken in, but it wasn't looking good. She was severely dehydrated after 24 hours without milk and even developed pneumonia two weeks after being brought in. That's when Andre Belma got involved. He was the manager of the orphanage that Kazi was brought to and he willed the sick baby gorilla back to health. The very first time they met, Andre held the baby against his bare chest for warmth and kept her there all night. Unfortunately, the story would only get worse. Barely a month later, another attack cost the Park 5 gorillas, and yet another orphan was brought in, this one named Ndezi. Nakazi and Ndezi were raised together and became not just lifelong friends, but sisters. Not only did Nakazi see her as family, she saw Andre Bauma as a mother, gender roles be damned, and the feeling was mutual with Andre seeing the orphans as daughters. Now raising children's hard enough and gorillas are no exception, but Andre actually had a secret weapon to keep the girls in line. Pringles. Yeah, we're not that different. Now one thing about gorillas is that babies often learn by imitating the adults around them, and with only humans around, the sisters eventually started seeing the other rangers as role models. One day a ranger noticed he had two shadows mimicking his every move, so he pulled out his phone, snapped a picture, and that's how the world got blessed with this. Now unfortunately, in September of 2021, Takazi would pass away at 14 after a long-standing illness, and she spent her last moments in the arms of Andre Bauma. Yeah, the same man that held her that night 14 years ago. So where are they now? And Desi's still alive and well, actually serving as a role model for the younger gorillas in the park the same way her sister did. Mr. Bauma's still out there making a difference any way he can. And Machu, he clearly hasn't slowed down with the selfies. But that's gonna do it for this video. Drink water, hug your parents. Shout out to Lions fans, I know I rag on y'all a lot, but I low-key have respect for you guys, and if it was up to me, y'all would be the ones in the Super Bowl. Shout out to Kathan Moore for helping me with this. Please go check him out and tell him I sent you there. And I'ma see y'all in the next one.